Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrex, and of course, welcome back to the adventure mode. In today's video, we're going to be going ahead and going to a higher difficulty, since now it's pretty apparent that this start difficulty is a little bit too easy if you're cheesing things and going with a sub. Now, off camera, I did kill one more craft, only a small craft, and I've used all the resources we've gained to give this thing a proper back, and I've also increased a few of its settings. So right now, we are able to go a fair bit faster. Though we do have some RTGs, only a few, so I couldn't really afford all that many. We have some proper torpedoes on the side now with explosives, which are super fun to use. And our ability to go up and down in the water is a little bit faster since before it was almost impossible to see happen. Uh, it's still pretty slow now because I need more engine power and everything else, but right now we are ascending, which will allow us to breach the surface partially. This simply is there so we can go through portals. Although, one lovely side effect of this is that we are slightly faster when we breach the surface. So under the water we can go about 16, 17 meters per second. However, when we've breached, like now, because we have less water drag, we can go above the 20 mark. We could go faster if we had more engines. Currently this thing is being completely powered off our deadly blades. Okay, let's go back underneath. As you can see, the second I go above the water, I'm attacked. So in combat mode, we're under the water, and then otherwise we can travel above the water if we want to, though I don't want to make this thing a true hybrid. Now in the last video I did ask, what would you like to see? Would you like to see this thing be a sub, a spacecraft, or what? And it seems very split, so still need some feedback there. For now though, since it's very expensive to get into space, we will be sticking with submarines at least for the time being. Okay, there's a portal over there and a couple of enemies in our way, so let's release our torpedoes. Wait, can you actually see me? Are you one of the first enemies which can actually see us? The Jacob Scorn. Hello. We're explosive. Well, its butt's gone. That's 40k damage. Now we can really fire again. And in fact, we can also fire our missiles, why not? Although apparently I can't see them. Where did our missiles go? Did they already hit? I don't know what happened to our missiles. Oh, no, nope. I probably should have just paid attention because it seems like they hit afterwards. Okay, so where's that portal I saw? I'm sure I saw one. Now, I don't want to use third person too much because it's a bit cheaty in inner sub, but what I'll need to do is be able to go above the water faster so I can just check myself. It would be quite atmospheric if I stayed mostly in first person, especially in this one. Although, I am a robot. I can survive without air. We're almost there. We are being uh, followed by something right now. Which can't seem to target us at this close range. Although I am worried it might have some bombs underneath or something. So hopefully those missiles will do the job. Not agile enough for this short range. That's a funny thing. Those are meant to be fired quite long range. Oh, underwater. Now, now, now. Yep, bombs. Should have done that faster. Bombs, and it's also falling apart. Oh, my missile did eventually hit it, it seems. Still need to be a bit faster going underwater, and we're out of capacity, so let's quickly add some more resource storage. Now, how would I do a retractable periscope? That's the question. So, if I'm even using the right word there, I'm not very good at words, I've noticed. So it would be a sub-object, it would be elevation, but I'd also want it to be controllable, like a turret. So it would be a one-axis, this is a test, clearly. So a one-axis turret, on top of the one-axis turret will add the piston. Let's go with the large one for now. Let's uh, go in the turret and make it number three. So now I can control that turret. On top of the piston then we'd have a... Where are you? Camera. Where is the camera? I have never used the cameras properly. I've got to be perfectly honest. And I have no idea where it is. Decorations, maybe? Maybe? The image display is there. Aha! I see you, wireless camera. There's a camera on the end. Sure. Uh, you know what? I mean, uh, we'd actually need that much stabilization, so sure. Then, back over here just quickly pop down a screen once again just so we're testing this so it would be in control again no is it the image display you're seeing Lathrix really not sure how to do this 
video screen maybe? Okay, so there's the video screen. So I'm gonna go inside. We already have the fire controls here, I believe. Oh, that's weird. Look at that. Yeah, so I'm turning the camera up there. We'd need multiple, I think, for like a 360 view. Especially with me controlling it like this. Yep, there's the back. There's the front. Technically, this works. Maybe there's some angled ones as well to make it a bit smoother. I don't really know. Okay, so what we need now is just a uh, control. And this will be... To extend and retract the piston. So it does work, and it is really cool. So if I orientate myself correctly, I can then look to the left, and I can see there's a portal to the west. Nice and simple. Lovely. Now, this isn't quite correct, as you can see, it kind of clips into each other's screen, but I can look all the way around me. I've tried it once before, so I can do a full 360, but it's awkward. I think the way I should do it is just have a room with the screens, and then have the periscope go up, and then have um, cameras all, all over it, essentially, at angles, maybe? Yeah, and then we can easily see 360. That shouldn't be too difficult to do either. That's what we'll do, but that requires a bigger sub. At the moment, we're too small for that. That's for the future. This is gonna look weird. I think I've missed one. Oh, no, no, that's extending, so it's this one here. Oh, no, try it again. Seems like if you want it to go really fast, you use the sm lots of the smaller ones. Okay, I'm not going to make it any larger than that. So what I'll need to do is just have a setting to go to an altitude where that can be viable. At the moment, it's either too deep or essentially above the water, which obviously isn't what we want. Also, although moving above the water is faster, we are not dealing with the um, waves very well. We're a bit too thin and just our stabilization is more suited for being surrounded by water. Now, where could I put those cameras, though? I mean, I don't need them perfectly around me just for now. I could just have them, like, forwards, backwards, right, left, etc. Added some more propellers to the bottom, and now we have a functional periscope. So let's put this all the way up. There we go. So we have what's in front of us. Oh, of course, now it's dark. But we have what's in front of us, what's to the right of us. Apparently there's a green portal and a seagull. We have what's to the left of us, which is another green portal, is there? Uh, yes, there is. Cool. So that is correct, and that's what's behind us. And then we have a subtle thing. So, that's that then. All we need to do now is have an altitude where this is functional or we're, or we're still actually safe. And as we get a larger sub, we can make this bigger as well so we can go further down while still using it. We're underwater. We then breach the surface and now we can see above the water. We can see that in fact there's an enemy over there. I wonder if we can see the missiles hit. Oh, we saw the missiles f uh, fly out. There they go, you can just about see them on the screen. It's like watching a really bad quality video. Will they hit? Might be a little bit too far away, it seems. I still see them flying. No, nope, they missed. No, nope, didn't quite make it. I was just being impatient. But at least now we know where it is. Now, of course, we do also get the blip, so we know it's over there. But uh, at least now we can see what's going on without necessarily endangering ourselves every single time. And let's go back down into the depths. There's the target, the spear. We've got nice and close now. Wow, that thing has a decent amount of armor to just deal with that so easily. Hmm, I wonder what this will look like. Okay, with that, let's go to our periscope distance. Our, pe our periscope altitude, I should say. Reaching it in a second. Oh, look at that! It's all blocky!
That is so cool to watch. Oh, there's explosions from the torps. Yeah, we definitely need to build a proper viewing room. Oh, we're not quite above the waves now. There we go. The good thing as well is if the periscope does get destroyed, it's very cheap to reply. It's only take a few seconds. Oh, the spear is sinking. A victory for our lovely little cheesy craft. Time to go collect the resources. Oh! There we go, we can see it underwater as well. Sorry, I'm just way too interested in this. It's currently like 3am, because of course it is, it's me. And my mind is just blown by just... Why have I done this before? Why is my damage so bad? I also need some more ammunition access, apparently. I am trying to keep um, capturing to a minimum this time around. I'll probably do it a lot more later just because it takes so long to get resources otherwise. But this is just the most perfectly disabled craft I've, I've ever seen before. It's just... I'm warping through. I am warping through. It's got me. It's got me in its grips. Oh, I may drown now. Um, let me out. Whoa, it absorbed me. I don't think I've seen that kind of defense before. It's like as soon as the gravity from Minecraft wears off from the boots, I then suddenly just warp. There we go, I think I did it. I'm seeing a lot of red now, so yeah, there's our craft. Which we're going to be devouring for resources. The spear. Let's have a look at it first, shall we? So what is the spear? Is it a transport craft? Another transport. Okay, we need to go to a higher difficulty again. All I'm going to do is devour this craft, make some changes, and then instantly go for a new red portal. Yeah, yeah, flag is flying. Excellent. But for now... The spear gets devoured. If we really wanted to go for capturing, all we'd need to do is add some drills to here um, using the double turret kind of system, and we'd be really, really effective. Just go underneath the target and just, <laughs> and just hollow them out, essentially. Just strap some resource storage to the bottom of the craft. What we're going to do is we're just going to go and try and find a blue portal. This will allow us to build in peace, but also it will drastically increase our difficulty. I will try to be avoiding fighting as much as possible, just because I don't want to have too much resource and just upgrade too much for even the next difficulty. We're already being incredibly cheesy. We don't need to be cheesy and just insanely huge. I will fire a single set of missiles, though, since I just want to see what this thing is. Apparently it's so small I can't even find it. And there's also some scouting missiles. Uh, some red, some green, but no, sadly no blue. Oh, that thing is really far away and absolutely tiny. A resource zone, dead ahead. Currently we've had to slow down just so our RTGs can continue to completely supply us with, with our engine power. The battery power gets drained first, then the fuel engines will kick in. So, we're going to that. What I've done is I've added some material um, harvesters on the top of the periscope, which means we can actually harvest resource from resource zones without having to breach the surface, which makes us far, far harder to detect. So far, I think there's three enemies currently out and about. I thought there was three. There was three. I think one of them may have killed another. Um, none of them have even slightly detected us. We have such a little radar presence currently above the water. We are practically invisible. I am so looking forward to making this place bigger. Even if we do eventually turn into a spacecraft, I want it so I can go through the entire craft. I've decided that much, at least. And what I might do for going through the rings, if we do go to space, is have a small shuttlecraft. Oh, I think I see the ring now. Is have a small shuttlecraft, and that way we can just go um, into the atmosphere with that, and then re-enter the Minecraft afterwards. I can even have it set up on a timer, so I can dock and then undock, and it will be automated. That wouldn't actually be difficult at all. It'll probably be easier than setting up the periscope, weirdly. There we are. Harvesting resource. Let's... Oh, let's not. There we go. We're a lot faster than we used to be. Perfect. Looks like we're harvesting ourselves, but we're not. <laughs> we are now harvesting this zone. And, uh, yeah, we'll just stay here till this zone's done. Then we'll continue our hunt for the blue resource zone. Being all sneaky-like. wonder how severe the blind spot is between these cameras right now.
And on, on a side note, I can actually make it to the zoom, so I don't need to do all the camera stuff. I didn't realize that, so... Let's see, so that red portal's about to vanish from our right side. And there- oh, actually! Uh, maybe four will be fine then, but what I'm probably going to do still is angle these screens, which should be fairly easy. Just put them on um, spin blocks or whatever. I'll also try mimics and see if that works. Then that way, it'll be just nice to, nicer to look at, because right now it's a bit claustrophobic. So if this was angled, that was angled. That'll probably be fine. Can't see behind us, though, if we do this system, but this way we can sit down this all nice and easy. Another quick side note is that, ooh, there's an enemy there, but also, um, the cameras in there I accidentally inverted. I had to use the upside down, I didn't realize how much of a problem that would be. It messes up everything when you're try trying to control things based on the image, so these are actually correct. But yeah, much bigger viewing room, that way we can have much larger cameras. We can see what's going on a lot easier and everything would be nice and uh, simple. Ooh, I just... Okay, it's difficult to leave the VR setup, apparently. So apparently from underneath the water we can see the cosmos. Oh, uh, we're in Scarlet Dawn territory apparently. Interesting. Okay, I've been going for a while now and I just can't find a blue portal. I don't know if they just don't spawn at this lower difficulty or what, but it's getting a bit annoying now. So instead, we're going to go through three red portals in a row, trying to avoid all combat between them. And then after the third one, I will start to upgrade the craft. Sounds fair. Sounds fair to me. So that's one red portal. We are now in difficulty... Uh, ten. So at least one more. And whilst we are also no longer able to be fought by anything, because it takes a while for enemies to start spawning again, we can go to the surface of the water. We can't deal with waves all that well, but we're still a little bit faster. And very bouncy, apparently. Yeah, we really can't deal with waves well. <laughs> Whoa, we are being flung around a lot. We're a dolphin. I just thought, what else we could do with the uh, periscope, if we do want it to rotate rather than have multiple, is we could set it up so rather than me, so rather than it following the camera, I can just press a button like K or J, and then that could cause it to turn. Just another way we could set it up. There's actually a lot of different ways we could do this. Also, I think it might just be the PID being a bit too strong, causing us to fly out of the air every few seconds. That, in combination with the fact most of our speed's coming from internal deadly blinds, which can work in the air as well. Although we're definitely too heavy to stay in the air, there's no way that the internal um, Deadly Blade controlling our altitude can make us fly, but yeah, it keeps on throwing us into the air. Which is fine. Um, it's a little bit of extra speed, I suppose. Gonna go to that resource zone, and after that, we'll just keep on looking for a red zone. Very little has happened this episode. I found out what the actual problem was with us bouncing around, is I'd set up the PIDs so they were above terrain or waves, rather than the mean ocean level, the mean sea level. This means it was constantly being variable, and we had enough strength in our propellers that it would vary and then throw us around, so that plus the strong PID. Not that interesting, but that was the problem, and now it's all smooth sailing. Literally. There we are, difficulty 15. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and upgrade what we can with the resources we have. So first things first, I want to add a few more RTGs so I can stay at maximum speed all the time without expending fuel, which would be lovely. Then I'd like to extend the back so I can add some more stuff just in general to the craft. And then I would like to add some more torpedoes. In fact, I may do that first. Adding an extra two to both sides would literally double our armament and that would make us a lot more deadly. So that's the first thing then extending the back, then adding some more RTGs, and finally clearing up this top section, because I really hate how the back looks at the moment. So, let's get to work. There we go, so that's the backside um, kind of cut off. I did save that as a prefab though, so all I'm going to do is quite literally just extend it and extend this piece as well. So let's extend it by... At the moment, we're kind of building a canoe more than anything else, but that's just how it's going to be for now. I might extend everything else later on. So maybe to there. So what I'm probably going to want to do is make this section here wider. I uh, couldn't have the missiles there, though, the torps. Yeah, let's redo this. 
and I'll make the middle section a bit wider as well. That way we can start putting down some more intricate stuff. Oh, I have got that in reverse. I think I may have just fired missiles into myself. Uh, can I escape those before they detonate? Nope, that's a missile currently live inside our craft. That's when we do testing before a battle. Does it detonate? Yep, it does. Ow. Ugh. Lovely. Okay, now that's set up. Let's continue to build backwards. And hopefully we'll have a more functional craft soon. Still no enemies nearby, thankfully. And I'm continuing to just expand the craft in general. Uh, we already have the new missiles, obviously, so we have two sets of torps now. Uh, I am going to add some new proper missiles as well. I think the end goal is if we stay as a sub, we'll probably be a particle cannon, or maybe... Maybe some form of, of advanced cannon, maybe a railgun, since you can get those to work underwater pretty easily. Okay, so say I want to do this, to remove that, add the glass there. I'm going to extend this front pod quite drastically, because I do like the idea of having this glass pod here. Then this is going to be the new section for this wall, that'll go all the way down there before curving back in. And then we'll have a wider section in the middle, similar to how I've kind of bloated out the middle there. And that will act as a secondary command section for the periscope for now. Eventually, again, I don't want a proper room with all the cameras set up. Bit of an emergency now. There is at least two still try to craft nearby, and I am 99% certain both of them have torpedoes. So, what we need to do is very quickly, missiles, sure, medium, is set up a couple of distraction sticks and just go full speed ahead, try and get away from them, maybe turn to fire against them later. Try to build quickly is never my strong point. So distraction sticks, for those who are wondering, are essentially just missiles with loads and loads of sonar target simulators. These make a target for the enemy harpoon, uh, sorry, enemy torpedoes, which is more appealing than us. Nope. Go. And then one for the harpoon itself, uh, let's say about 100 meters behind us. And what else you want is at least one regulator, so don't need to keep on spamming them all the time. There we go. Almost ready. Don't break, that would be awful. Apply to all. And that should be it, really. Then there's a cat shark. Oh, yep, yeah, there's the harpoons coming towards us. Wow, that didn't even go for the distraction sticks then. Bad angle. Wow, it's quick. Hopefully it hits. Well, uh, that'll slow it down at least. I mean, it could just stay and fight, really. I th I'm sure it's two, yeah, it's definitely two. I don't know about the second one. I need more ammo, I was gonna add that next, but I was still building the craft! Okay, distraction sticks actually worked that time. They completely threw off the um, torpedoes. And actually, it looks like they're maybe... Are the enemy torpedoes going against the enemy now? I think they did like a full um, arc. Ooh, that thing's butt is being destroyed. Yeah, once again, distraction stick doing great work. I think I may have underestimated. Uh, yeah, I may have underestimated my craft. Okay, we've completely neutralised its speed. So if you want to get away, we can. Or we could just continue doing this. Yes! <laughs> Victory! Finish it off. Devastated. Where's the other craft gone? I'm sure it's too red. There, okay, so there's another one. Um, let's aim towards it and see what it is. I don't want that resource, obviously. 
Okay, firing half, uh, firing torpedoes. This is the arrow. Okay, I've never actually seen this one before. What is it? I'm fairly certain it was Steel Strider from what I seen just before diving down, but I don't know other than that. Can it fight us? It's quite far away regardless. We're now at just about to hit one kilometer away. Still going. Yeah, we're not going to be in range of these um, torpedoes. Wow, that is miles away. Literally. Still haven't seen any torpedoes from it though, so okay, we can pretty much safely say we're safe. Woo! Okay, first uh, first fight, I was genuinely scared. A lot of the work now is just clean up duty, because currently the inside is not very well armoured at all. It's just a mesh of all the other designs, everything else, when I changed it, so that needs to be altered drastically. Next thing is to build a proper engine room, well, a proper battery room, I suppose, at this point. And I am going to remove all the fuel engines for the time being. Then it's more work on outside armour, and then on weapons, and then we'll go back to actually try to fight. Right now I'm just slowly coasting along. That's my heartstone, don't worry, that's not someone hitting me. I'll be back in action very soon. Okay, most cleanup is done outside the paintwork now. Inside has more space for me, if I can get in, there we go. Underneath is now way more armoured, most of the fuel engines have been removed except for one backup. The PID is still a bit extreme at the moment, as you can see, so that needs a bit of work, but that's just because I've changed all the weight. I have been surrounded by enemies now for the last ooh, 15 minutes as I am finishing cleaning up. I know I said I was done with the cleaning up juicy, I was wrong, because I forgot this missile mess here, which was originally sitting on my heartstone. Yeah, I also have some control blocks and everything. Now I have enough space, what I can start doing is segmenting everything. And then that way, in the future, when I upgrade things, it'll all be nice and easy. And there's our little periscope. There we go. This'll be our room for our tech. Then all of this space will be missiles. And that way I can add more missiles, so we can use missiles while we use missiles, so we can hit things with missiles. Whoops, messed up there. There we go. Make sure that the electric engine always has the main priority, so my backup fuel engine isn't active unless this is completely used up. As it was standing, I was burning fuel even though I had spare energy from the RTGs. Ooh, is that a flyer? No, it's, no, yep, definitely flyer, so it's the ironclad and something else. There's our torps. I'm currently there, you can just see the periscope sticking out of the water. I'm just going to wait for the torps to hit. Any second now, it takes so long to get there. Oh, here they go. Oh, look at that confetti. Let's end this fight for both of them. There goes the ironclad. Underestimate how fast I was going, I think I'm basically right next to the other enemy. Yeah, there we go, we can see us hitting them. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Yeah, I need more on cameras if, if I want to play with Zoom. Definitely an end goal of this craft. To have a proper camera room, if I'm going to stick in underwater. Oh, there it is, right above us. Well, that's terrifying. The swordfish. Does it seem like it has bombs or anything? And we're definitely going down right now, so chance of actually hitting us is very low. Oh no, it has mines? Yeah, it has mines by the looks of things. Good job I started moving down, which I'm not going down as fast as I used to. I need to uh, change them.
victory with a stick. Oh, hello. Those are really quick shots. What is that? Oh, it's you. How are you seeing me? Or oh, are you firing at something else and I'm caught in the crossfire? I think I might just be caught in the crossfire. Anyway, um, there's actually a blue portal there. So I do want to increase the difficulty again. And there's resources everywhere. So I'm going to be calling the episode here. I will be going through the blue portal next time. Which will drastically increase my difficulty. Currently we are in difficulty... Uh, where are you? Difficulty 15. I'll be going to difficulty, I believe it rises it by 20 or 15, so we're going to be much, much more difficult next time. I'll just make sure to collect all the resources nearby first. Am I actually under attack? It, if I am, I'm under attack so mildly, I'm not particularly scared. Okay, let's deal with this thing first, shall we? Seems like I was just caught between the crossfire. Oh yeah, I've turned my torpedoes now into pure high explosive, hence why I've already done like 60k damage before the frags even hit. That thing is a serious tank. It tanks so much damage. Cause a breach already. Oh, yeah, there we go. I think we've done just that. As it's fighting, we're just slowly, parasitically devouring it. Whee! Wait, are we going to end up going after the other target because of this? Yes! <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, a bastion. Oh, no, I'm running out of fuel. No, bastion. Well, at least it's in view. Oh no, I, I did! Oh, I could have probably captured that, but honestly, we're already being incredibly cheesy. Let's... Let's leave some cheese, you know. Okay, I know it said less cheese, but I need to try this. EMP torps. <laughs> well, that was the easiest capture ever. <laughs> oh, nice and simple. Okay, now we're going to up the difficulty. So this is the last thing now. We're going to scrap the bastion. Thank you. I'll be taking that. And we'll be going back to the blue portal, so next time the difficulty will be increased drastically and I only have 60k resources in order to upgrade my craft. Yeah, um... It's all gonna come down to luck, really. Am I gonna keep facing off against opponents who can't see me? Or am I going to face off against enemies like the first one we saw today, which actually really, really scared me? Because if I didn't react quickly with those uh, distraction sticks, we could have lost. We were in the process of being upgraded and we had very little defense. But with that... Thank you so much for watching. Here is the craft in the end. I'm not sure if I ended up showing it, but this is how it looks, and I'm really happy with that, except for the periscope, which should be retracted right now. Where's the controls for that? Hello, controls. I know they're somewhere. There we go. So, yeah, I'm actually really happy with this sub at the moment. It's not all that expensive. It's currently 80k, um, actually. Yeah, it's 81k currently. And it's doing fairly well. It's now armoured up enough it'll actually take a few hits. It has the, the distraction sticks. It has an okay-ish armament. It, may, it moves at a decent speed. And a lot of that resource is purely because we're being very economical and we're using RTGs rather than a fuel engine, which could be far cheaper but take more resource over time. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, much higher difficulty, and definitely a lot more fighting. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Oh, actually, one last thing quickly. Uh, turns out I do actually have 20k more resource, and I thought I just don't have the storage for it, so I'm going to grab some more storage, then we'll go to the blue portal. Thank you, and goodbye.